Rasmus Gemka. Well, this match is from the second quarter of the draw. And I can tell you that we actually lost a seed. Uh, Misha Zilberman of Israel was promoted from the reserve list because the World Championship bronze medalist, Pranoy, the number seven seed, forced to withdraw because of a bad back. So that is why we've only got one seed within this quarter of the draw. Lin Chun E, I can tell you, came from a game and 4-11 down to beat Sunyama. 21-19 in the deciding game. That really was an extraordinary match. That was on court two and I was just keeping my little beady eye on that uh, because that was fantastic. Well, if we have a match as good as uh, that uh, one that's already been played in this section, we're going to be in for a real treat. For number one, men's singles from Thailand, Kunlamut Mititan. The world champion, number four seed here, Kunlamut Tawinasan won the gold medal in Copenhagen earlier this year, having been in the final of the World Championships last year in Tokyo. But no doubt the support will be overwhelmingly for this man, Erasmus Gemka. Seventh consecutive Denmark Open for him. And he reached the final in 2020, losing out to Anna's Antonsen his childhood friend and training partner uh, since they were little boys. That was a very special occasion. So as far as we're concerned for this first round match, it will be a third meeting between these two players and of the previous two, honours are shared. Uh, but it may surprise some people that the last time they met it was this man, Gemka, who won. It was in the quarter-final of the French Super 750 last year. Hour and 13 minutes for 21-11 in the deciding game. OK, I've black and I've red. Rasmus, you choose. Uh, red. red. Black for you. Red it is. Side, Seven receive. 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 OK. Well, both of these players have had recent injury woes. Uh, this man pulled out of his first round match last week in Vanta in Finland. He was 11-7 down in the deciding game against the left-handed Christo Popov. A recurrence of the back injury that he's suffered from in the past. So it's good to see him back on court, the 22-year-old from Bangkok. Has been as high as three on the world rankings. That was from the 6th of June, four consecutive weeks. Now, here's the interesting part. It is his third consecutive appearance at the Denmark Open, and he's never won a match here. Two first-round losses prior to this year for the reigning world champion. That's quite extraordinary, isn't it? I don't think he's really recovered since his World Championship gold medal in that final against Kodai Narooka, which was a marathon match, almost two hours. Rasmus Gemka is 26 years of age from Verbu J. J stands for Jutland because there's two Verbus here in Denmark. And his highest ranking, as you can see, was 10, but you've got to go back to the end of 2021 for that currently 23. So not only was he in the final of this Denmark Open three years ago, four years ago, he was a quarter-finalist as well. Kenneth Jonasson on the left as we look at them, the head coach to the Danish national team, and Thomas Stangor who was chewing gum. A bit like Sir Alex Ferguson. Ready to play. Former Manchester United manager. So, 
Seamus Halpin is our umpire for this one. And Daniel Wolf from Austria is our service judge. Rasmus <laughs> Gemka. I didn't realise we still had shuttle dispensers here at the Denmark Open. I like the shuttle dispensers. He went to the umpire to try and get a shuttle. I did that too. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> You're very honest to yeah. admit to that. I know. I, I like the shuttle dispensers. I don't see why that has to be the service judge's job to no. give me a shuttle. No, I like the. Yeah. It was brought into the sport of badminton during the global pandemic so that the service judge didn't have to handle shuttles before passing them on to the players. Ladies and gentlemen, on my right, Rasmus Gemke, Denmark. And on my left, Kon Lavut Vitasen, Thailand. Rasmus Kempe to serve. Love all. Play. So the beaten finalist from three years ago, Rasmus Gemke, far side of the court, getting this match underway against the reigning world champion, Widersan of Thailand. So, Kirsty, just give me your thoughts on what One makes Kunlawut to Widersan so special to be able to win a World Championship gold medal? What are his attributes that make him so good? I think the biggest thing is his um, flexibility, and I mean that in a physical sense, but also in a, in a tactical sense. I think he is able to cope and deal with whatever Service is thrown over. at him so well One, and make four. these small adaptations. Um, I think his explosive power to the rear of the court is incredible but also his ability to just defend and survive just some relentless attacking shots, um, I think is one of his massive strengths. Yeah. Oh, that's a good smash from Gemka. Great placement, body smash. I was going to say towards the right hip, but I think it was a little high for the right hip, but I that's very good. I was going to say the right shoulder is quite often the most difficult place to retrieve a shuttle from. High pace being set right at the start of this game. Good rally. Oi. Oh my goodness. How did he get that back? Oh, that's wild. He's going well wild. I think this is what we can expect from this from this matchup. Just both players are so good at retrieving. You that think was that, that wasn't should it? be on the floor with most people. So each player is going to have to find a way through the other, which is no mean feat. Read that like a book. Four, one. Look, he's already moving forward. I think that is one thing Rasmus can do in this game, and it's control that net. 
think singles games, as with doubles games that we just discussed in the previous match, are Five, often one. won and lost with who takes control of the net area. I think in many singles, it's the net play is possibly the most important shot. Mm -hmm. disagree with One. any of your analysis of Willisan, but I'm surprised you didn't talk also about his technical skills. Because I watch these rallies, and clearly you've identified his movement is a little more fluid than Gemka's. Um, but I think that his racket skills as well, he has this delightful, typical Thailand player, a bit like uh, Rachino Kintanon, but they have the same coach, so that's not altogether surprising. Uh, this wonderful, easy, relaxed hitting style. And I think that in itself also creates a lot of deception. Absolutely, yeah. I think there's that flow to it. It's not kind of um, robotic and like very produced. I think it's very go with the flow and, and you know, take it as it comes. Yeah. Well, this is a brilliant start from Genka. 7-1 advantage. Oh, there's a lovely skill. That's nice. That's Service nice. Over. And that's the sort of technical skill Two, to which I was seven. alluding to a moment ago. Yeah. Lovely. Yeah. Everything says he's going to slap that down the straight line. Yeah. And he just turns it across and takes the pace off of it. Exactly. I'm just thinking about your statistics earlier. Thank you. Denmark must be a love-hate situation for for design. Yes. You win your, your world title here in the capital of Denmark just Two, a few months ago. Seven. But, you know, sometimes after a world championship or Olympic Games gold, or, you know, there's a bit of a, a reaction. After such a high, there's, understandably, it tends to be a bit of a trough. You know, it's, it's Three, natural physics seven. in a way. In, in, you know, he took some time off, then he went to the Asian Games at Widersan, where he lost in the round of last 16 to Lee Si Jia, who then lost in the quarterfinal. He, he didn't play Hong Kong, China or China. Mm -hmm. So he's had some time off. Um, he struggled with a bad back last week. It, whereas his confidence should be brimming because he's world champion, actually it's not brimming Four, because of what's seven. happened since the world championships. Absolutely, I think um, it's 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 human to, yeah. to have such a high and then think, well, how do how do I continue this? But also a little bit injured. So I think a correct choice to take some time, mm. um, but also it's the most difficult thing. Yeah to step back into top level badminton. Yeah. Oh, Oy. good defense. Five, seven. Well, Gimka will not be happy with himself that he didn't finish this one off. Thank you. And in the blink of an eye, the world champion is right back in this opening game. Rasmus. Five. Now you seven. were in Hong Kong, Kirsty, and you were, I think, calling Gemka's match, were you not, against Nishimoto? Yes. And you were telling me just now he won the opening game and he was 
eight Sam two up. Yeah, we thought eight. he was struggling, um, but somehow I think there was a he was really down, and then he made a incredible comeback. And we thought he had a heavily strapped knee. I can't yeah. remember which one. And I we think thought it's his right knee, but it's the same as in the past. I thought we well, we thought mm, maybe this isn't uh, the day for him. And then he he really had Nine. the momentum, but. Five. Maybe something in his body was just telling him, no, this isn't right. And he, he withdrew from that match. But, I mean, we've got no tape today. So I'm so hoping... That's a good sign. Yeah. Yeah. Mister. Ten, five... Are you sure that he he won the opening game? Now that you say that, no. I think he, I I think think he it lost. might be in the second game. Yeah, I think he lost the opening game and was yeah. two up in the second when he pulled out. That might be it. So it's a six-point advantage for Erasmus Gemka here in the opening game against the reigning world champion in the whoop to Widdersan. So there are not a shell and reaper there, you have to be hollow, not a knee button to see the stoic bag of wordy put me. The directly go them there, or so come up in sudden there. I can heal holly, 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 or so come with them to see the stoic can all lace button. The epi for leave for the så kommer op i den, før han skærer ned, og så står du lidt for langt tilbage, eller spiller du lidt for blød. Ikke også? Altså, når du løfter godt, især til round the hitten. Ikke også? Hvis han bare skærer den ned, og han får den herop, så skal vi lidt, lidt længere frem. Kenneth Jonasson, doing the coaching break there for Gem Cup. Play. Urging his man to continue with the deception, hold the shot to the last possible moment so that Widersan doesn't know where it's going. Oh, that's a good shot. You saw Gemke did that serve with his right leg forward and immediately split and changed his feet for that rear forehand corner. He knew that was coming, he planned for that. Well read. Well, I was watching this man, Gemka, at the India Open. And he was uh, playing, I think it was a quarter final match. Yep, perfect down the line against Victor Axelsson. And he went 13, up into his forehand five. corner to uh, try and play a shot. And I thought he'd ruptured his Achilles. He just stayed down, got carted off the court in uh, a wheelchair. I remember this. Yes, but in fact, it was it was a muscle injury. It wasn't the Achilles because he would have been out for months with an Achilles injury. Thank goodness, yeah. Yeah, so it's quite remarkable that he's come back. But he he does suffer a lot with injuries, Erasmus Gimka. 14, 5. And I think that goes back to the point that well, you alluded to it because you said about uh, Widersan having particularly good movement and probably better movement than this man. I think his his movement is sort of almost forced, so he doesn't look fluent like his opponent in move, moving. And I think that creates injuries. In a way, it's um, admirable because it's very learned. It's very yeah. learned movement. Good point. Service yep. over. Um, but also that leads to... Kind of, Six, it's harder 14. for him to adapt to strange shuttle patterns or unexpected shots. Yeah. And I think uh, Gemka is actually a little bit taller than most people maybe think he is. He's, he's a tall man. Yeah, six foot one. Yeah. Just over. Well, that had been a run of seven straight points for Gemka prior to that last rally. That's a beauty. Yeah. 
This has got to be the longest rally of the match so oh, yeah. far. That's a super shot for Rasmus Gebka. Clever thought process. He's in trouble there, Kirsty. Absolutely. Fifth sign maybe just trying to be a little bit a little bit cute. Great rally. Uh, and I think, I don't know, worth noting that Kenneth Jonasson said something about round the head. My Danish isn't isn't tip top, but he said something about round the head corner as he was making his way back to yeah. the chair. And Gemke played in those 50 or the 25 shots that Gemke played there. He played one to the round the head. So I don't know if he's actively avoiding Vitsarn's round the head corner. No, that's a great spot by you. No, wait, we've got one there. And a perfect shot from Vitsarn. Yeah. 7 15. Mm, clearly, in, that's inside the line. Thank you. It's a good net shot from Widersan. Follow up. It's almost as if he's suddenly woken up with his son and said, OK, I've got to start attacking and taking more initiative. Yeah, he was a little bit, um, yeah, sitting back a little at the start yeah. of this uh, game. Yeah, a little too reactive rather than proactive. Exactly. I think he's trying to grab a little bit more initiative now. It was a super angle Ten, from the world 15. champion and a spectacular dive here from Gemka to get that back. That was actually a really good recovery. That was a shame that that went long. Ten fifteen scoreline again, Kirsty. Your favourite this week. <laughs> Certainly been the favourite today. <laughs> it is. It's such a. There's still such a long way to go, and it maybe Ten, looks like 15. a big gap, but there's still so much to happen. Yeah. And badminton is so much about ebbs and flows and ups and downs and momentum shifts and swings. And like you say, it looks like Vitasarn's kind of woken up. Skin. Brilliant. Utterly brilliant. 11 15. Even the way he's walking in between rallies now, with his son, I think shows a bit more confidence and a bit more belief. With more purpose. Yes. Mm. This is five straight points. 
And if he can keep this going, he's really playing himself very much back into this opening game. Instead. And that, to me, is a sign of 12, a bit of a, a panic from Gemka. Yeah. He'll be acutely aware that it's been five points, too. Yeah. What happens, Kirsty? Does instinct take over? And uh, I mean, you don't consciously sort of think, oh, I've got to get behind this and I've got to play a winner quickly because it, my opponent's on a run. Uh, but that seems to be what's, what happens. Yeah, it's quite often 13, in, um, in pressure 15. situations, you almost, yeah, you don't really control what you do. You just snap back to your default instincts. Yeah. And Rasmus would have seen that shuttle go up and everything in him tells him to hit it as hard as he can down the way rather than maybe having that clarity of mind to maybe put a punch clear in or guide it down better. And that's quite often, as we, we've seen in the last couple of years, players using ice packs on the back of their necks. Yeah. And that's to cool down the vagus nerve that runs down your spinal column and it's linked to better decision making. That's very interesting. What a rally. Yep. Stops the run of points, finally. 16, Had to work hard for it. Yeah. And that had been seven straight points. Flick serve. Oh. Long. It's the control that Gepka took at the net there. Third beat. <laughs> He's happy, Kenneth Jonasson. So he should be. He's up the pace again, has Gimka. I do have a question mark in my own mind as to whether he can keep the sort of pace necessary to beat the reigning world champion, whether he can keep that pace going for the entirety of three games, if necessary. There's no doubt this man's got stamina, but can he keep the pace going? Big high clear, Service not over. quite sure. Was he off balance? Why 14. did he play that high clear? That was a very uh, defensive he... shot. No, oh, he wasn't off balance. Really off balance, no. That's very odd decision making. Sometimes a high clear can just be a bit of a reset, but I don't think that's 
traffic, you would maybe want to guide that down just to not give it certain chances like that. He's going to be clinical when when you give him a shuttle that high. Yeah. A lot of reverse slice on that push from Kuzi San. Yeah. Causing the deception. Position from Gemka. 19, 15. This one, a risky shot because there was a gap across court. Well, we just aren't making the error. Well taken. Wasn't deceived by Guido San at all. And it's now five game point opportunities for Rasmus Ginka. Well, he's earned it. He's worked hard in this opening game. And that final shot there was an absolute beauty. Right into the chest of the world champion. I think the last few rallies we've actually seen Gemka play off the net a little bit. We're not going for tight nets and those net skills. It's actually been a bit more service line to service line. And then he's waiting to pounce on those ones that are kind of poked through by, by Vitasarn. See, we're going along kind of into the service line now. Mm, opening game, 21-15 in favour of the 2020 beaten finalist here at the Denmark Open, Erasmus Gemke. 21-15. Ampar just confirming that scoreline, 21-15 in 26 minutes. Yeah, and the slot set, all the same. It can't be for me, Hans Mølster. No, no. It's a little bit of a spot, but we play them for to play them in. It's just for it. I feel a little bit, if I come into this here. Men det er fordi, det er ham, der ligger den gode overspilling først. Ja, ikke også? Da du begynder at lægge den gode overspilling over ham, så slår han nedad, så får han knækket, ikke også? Ikke også? Det er ligesom det, der starter, og starter duellerne. Det er ikke fordi, for meget du ved, lidt blødt forbane osv. Mellemspil, begge sider må løft, vente på, at der kommer den rigtige chance. Ikke også? Nå, nu kommer, vi, nu kommer vi herover på den her side. Ja, ikke? Du kan stadigvæk godt spille løftet, men den skal altså, komme lidt... En Lidt tidligere en gang imellem er godt, du ved, således at du har overskud til den. Okay. Ja, det, det er rigtig, rigtig, rigtig sundt. Ja, selvfølgelig også gå ind og tage nettet, men bare lige sådan det er. Han står langt frem, når han spiller der fra ydersiderne, fordi han gerne vil have knækket, eller du ved, den korte, således at han kommer højt på forbanen. Ja. Ja, Court one, 20 seconds. Court one, 20 seconds.
second game. Love all. Play. So Erasmus Gemka won game to the good against the reigning world champion and number four seed Kuna Witwidesan. Over. Now, as neither of One us speak love. any Thai, oh, I assume you don't speak any Thai language. Correct Firstly, assumption. Correct, correct <laughs> assumption. So, apart upon Gernshu Shuk, we don't know what on earth he was saying to the world champion. What would you have said if you were in that coaching position there? Well, I think he had his best run when he was trying to be the, the proactive, initiative-taking player. I think sitting back and letting Gemka come at you in this hall with a home crowd behind him, that's not a wave you want to be on the receiving end of. So I think Two. to yeah, set himself up, use that net, get Gemka lifting to him so that he can kind of assert his attacking dominance over Gemka. And I think that will be useful with uh, Gemka on the slightly faster end now. So he'll have to be pretty careful or measured with his lifts. Yeah. We'll like see. that. <laughs> Three, love. Yeah, and that wasn't really even close. Two flats from Rudisan. Attempt to cross court clear. Only two players from Thailand have ever won titles here at the Denmark Open. Of course, one in the women's singles, and that was Ratchanakinsnan. Do you remember what year that was? Oh, oh, I like this game. I got it right the last time we played this game. Um, what year was she Service particularly over. dominant? I Five, will say... One. 2017? Correct. Oh. And who was the only men's singles winner? Oh. Oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to struggle to produce that name for you. 2016, a year before Rachinuk, Tanon Sak Buns, Sansum Bunsak. Bunsak, there you go, okay. Yeah, and interestingly, both of the Thai winners won when they were unseeded. Rachinuk would have been unseeded in she 2017. Was, she was unseeded. That is a fun fact. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you like my fun yeah. facts. Oh, I do. I'm going to store them up. Service over. Two, five. Well, it seems if you're a Japanese pair in the women's doubles, you have to be seeded number one to win the Denmark Open. Yeah. And do you need to be unseeded a Thai singles player? Yeah. Oh. That's good retrieving. Yeah. It's 
seems to be whenever whenever anyone gives away that that high, almost resetting clear, it gets punished. Yeah. In here. So in other words, the stadium favours the attacking player. I think so. Yeah. It's a it's a it's a nice size of stadium in here. It is. It's very nice arena. Yeah. And yeah, I wouldn't say it was particularly windy, as we can see. There's no no crazy uh, kind of drift on the shuttle or anything. So you can get a real nice Three, clean five. hit overhead and really punish those loose shots. Play. Maybe a little bit of shuttle in his eye. Disturbing Gemka. Service over. Six, yeah. three. Hoping to get his racket in the way and for the kill to mount. Oh, yeah, now his racket head was over the net. Good spot by the umpire. Very good umpiring. He put his racket up so early there. If he had moved as Vitasarn had hit that shot, he might have... Yeah. It may not have been a fault, but he really um, put that racket up early. And like you say, just a couple of centimetres over that net. Yeah. No, that's not allowed. My favourite camera angle is the one right along the net. That's my yeah. favourite. Well done, Mr. Halpin. Get ready. Good on parring. Superb, absolutely superb from Genka. Four, six. Again, that high clear, punished. Yeah. And this slice across court is plumb on the line. Court gets mocked, players take a break. And the thing is, Kirsty, is that, of course, when you're the up-and-coming player, as uh, Wittesan was not expected to win the World Championships. Uh, of course, he was seeded in the top three, but, you know, you're not expected to win. Everybody expected Victor Axelsson on home soil to take the gold medal again. He was the reigning world champion. But when you become a world champion or you win a big title, pressures change. All of a sudden, everybody's out to beat you. Everybody's examining every video footage there's ever been of you to find a weakness. It's tough at the top. Absolutely. I think we saw a similar thing with Loki and you. Yeah. Uh, after the Huelva World Championships. Um, again, kind of unexpected, but a well-deserving world champion. Yeah, uh, that's for sure. That's a beautiful map. Um, but yeah, like you say, it, it does change things. I spoke the other day about um, uh, Ra Ra Ranky Reddy and Shetty becoming world number one. That it changes nothing, but it changes things. Yeah. That little number one next to your name. Yeah. Um, like you say, suddenly there's uh, new pressures. People are more out to get you. Yeah. Service yeah, over. your worldview kind of changes a little bit. Seven, five. And I think of, uh, you know, when we go back a couple of years and think after the Olympic Games, uh, the badminton discipline, obviously, I think Victor Axelsson's 
willingness to go out and put himself on the line and come out on top t so many times uh, was a wonderful example of, you know, mental toughness. Definitely. We were talking earlier about, you know, Vitasarn winning the World Championships and then kind of recovering from that physically and yeah. people underestimate the emotional part of it. Yeah. Um, to do these tournaments and to go far in these tournaments week after week Eight, after week, five. only I would say the person that's done it best has to be Victor Axelsson. I totally agree. Just the relentlessness of that man and his ability to, like you say, not shy away from things, to stand up and go in 100% every tournament that he's in, never holds anything back. No. And to be good at it and to do it successfully. Yeah. You see, there's another example because the Olympic men's doubles champions, Li Yang and Wang Chi Lin, they basically took some time off. Wang Chi Lin was invited on to many television shows and was singing and I think was doing a bit of acting as well. And I think that they, when they came back, they no longer Six. had that aura Eight. of being Olympic champions because everybody else had continued playing. And I'm wondering in a way whether this has affected Widdersun, the fact that he decided that because he had had time off, he was on uh, television shows having come back as world champion in his home country of Thailand decides not to play the China Open, doesn't play the Hong Kong China Open, doesn't really perform at the Asian Games. And it's almost as if he's now lost that aura of, of being world champion. Of course, he's, he's going to hold that title for two years because we don't have a world championship next year. Sure. Because it's Olympic year. And he's got to fight Nine, now to six. get that aura of yeah. invincibility that I'm the best, I'm the world champion. And that's tough. Yeah, I think you're completely right. I think it's uh, it's momentum in terms of the badminton and the tournaments, but it's also a confidence within yourself. And quite often you can, if, if someone knew nothing about badminton and they watched two players walk onto court, I would like to bet that they could they could see who the, the seeded player or the, the, the better player is just by how they, they enter, yeah. enter the playing space how they carry themselves. But like you say, with this sound taking a little time, it's not as fresh in all of his opponents' minds what he did at that World Championships, which was incredibly impressive. Yeah. So he's perhaps less of a threat. Yeah. Because he's taken that time away. But it's a dilemma. He, you know, after the high of winning a major title, you know, you've, you can't maintain that, that peak forever. So you've got to have a little trough at some point. That's well taken. Mm. Service over. But it's getting the balance between having too much Ten. time off. Seven. You know, of course, he's not going to be worried about qualifying for the World Tour Finals because he gets an invitation anyway as world champion. Absolutely. So he doesn't, you know, he's, he's only 12 uh, on the race to the World Tour Finals in Hangzhou. He d that doesn't bother him. Yeah. That is a, a part that I think I, I 11, as a player, and I will finish that thought after the interval. Yeah, because it is a four-point advantage for the number four seed, the reigning world champion. Okay. Jeg, jeg, synes, jeg synes stadigvæk, at du har haft meget succes med at prøve for din kort forhånd at gå lige eller op over ham i lige baner, også ned forhånd for den sags skyld. Ja, det også. Men, ja, men du ved, den der kort kryds, når du er heroppe, og han skærer nedad, det er en helt anden sag. Der må du meget gøre. Ha? Kort 1, 20 seconds. Kort 1, 20 seconds. Ja. Men, men hver gang du har dyrket hans baglinje, så kommer der noget godt ud af det. Ja, præcis, ikke også? Ja. Eleven, seven. Well, as play resumes, I can tell you that Kenneth Jonasson talking to Gemka. 
uh, was urging him not to be try and be t so creative too early in the rally. Now that's interesting. Felt he was getting success in the forehand net position, but also wanted him to use the back line. Now, if we're right about the drift, then it's awfully difficult to find that back line. And we've got a challenge right here and right now on that very back line. The challenge is from Gemka. Well, it was the sideline in question, and indeed it was out. Challenge unsuccessful, one challenge remaining. 12-7, play. So, Kirsty, back to the point you were going to make before the mid-game interval. Yeah, I think it's um, something that a lot of players, myself included, um, you're always trying to get the balance correct between pushing yourself as physically as as hard as you possibly can and touring as much as you can between that and and your mental health and your emotional well-being because it, it takes a lot out of you to get so emotionally up for these games especially if you're going five games back to back and then how do you balance that with being a oh that's a beauty that's lovely uh, a friend a partner a a brother and a sister. Oh. What a super rally. Yeah, it's difficult. It, it's very difficult to keep that balance. Look at this retrieving cone. Look at that. On his knees as he... Oh, and a little neck cord as yeah. a bonus. Bike on court. Still kept his eye on the shuttle, even throughout the drive. Rasmus. 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 That little hold that Kenneth was talking about earlier. Eight, that hold and play back onto the net. Yeah, it's nicely done. like to see that with a player I have to say you get deceived by net shots in the previous rally and you do exactly the same thing back it does feel good I'm not gonna <laughs> lie <laughs> anything you can do it's equilibrium returning to the universe oh Ooh. goodness that's wild a little bit wild 15 8 I think Gemka's right to, to go for a, a kind of power, power shot there, but he has to make them count at this stage in the game with this scoreline. He has to make those ones count yeah. and make Vitasarn work. Oh, my goodness, he played that with a backhand mm. from the deep forehand corner. <laughs> what on earth is going on? Riddle me that. That's, it's not in your textbooks. That's just extraordinary. I've seen it all now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
A backhand from a backhand round the back from the deep forehand corner. <laughs> That's yeah, definitely one for the practice courts, isn't it? You'll be practicing that tomorrow. Yep. Service you can over. count on it. Nine, sixteen. Peter Gade has his own shot. Now Gemka's got his own shot. Oh well, what about um, Scorpion shot from Aaron Chia? Oh sure. Victor likes the behind the back no look. Yeah. Too. Good angle on that one him off the pace yeah and he's learned from that previous error what was it three rallies ago mm -hmm. where he was wild with the smash down the forehand side as you say taking pace off that time going for placement Oish. service over yeah. 17 well, i don't know whether 10. you call it lucky net cord or whether you call that great skill Oh, it walked along the top of the net. There's nothing you can do about that. Look at this. It's, it spins Aye. and walks along sideways. <laughs> You've got to love it, haven't you? Nice. Nice change up. Service over. 11, 17. Wait. Service over. 18, 11. Two points away 11. from the second game. And forcing her third and deciding game in this first round encounter. for placement on Service that one rather over. than power just putting it over cross court 12 19 yeah and i think that goes back to very simplistic very basic singles tactics which to me is all about trying to outmaneuver an opponent you play to all corners of four corners of the court moving them around until they're slightly out of position then you can go for your winner whereas doubles is far more about trying to force an error by by attacking play yeah. so you know the fact that he he just took pace off he was all about placement rather than power it goes back to the basic simplistic tactics yeah i think we can have all these complicated uh percentages of where someone's more likely to hit and their strengths and their weaknesses but like you say sometimes we need to return to it's the person that keeps it in the court longer will win 13, those errors. i'm 19. not sure that that's the mentality I would like a player to adopt in in any singles discipline now nowadays because I think that the game has has developed to such an extent from my day that you know I think that all these players now have to have all these skills I mean look at this rally yeah this I mean yep of course you're right if you hit it out you've lost the rally but there's huge number of skills there's huge number of looking to will i play that with disguise oh yeah to make my opponent take it late if they're taking it late then i've got a chance to play a winner oh absolutely yes it's not, definitely not as simple as keep it in the court there's uh, yeah. a million other things that go along with that but uh yeah it, at these at this stage 
it's who can keep the shuttle in the court with the best quality possible and like you say maneuver your opponent exactly. it's not all about the the fast and furious the up jump smash power right. shots exactly yeah it becomes a little game of chess thank you I was wondering if it was going to be worth Gemka's while 14, to fight back 19. in this set. From 19.12 or 11, I think? 11. 11. But now you find yourself at 19.14, and that's... Uh, that's possible. That's possible. It's reasonable. Good flick. Service no. over. Yeah. Gemka's reaction Game after the rally. 14. To me, showing the frustration. I think justified. He was he was in control of that rally. Yeah. Did seem to be. And that cross court block. Yeah. Frustration. Uh, because it is now game point opportunities. Six of them for Kunlu Twitter son to level this first round match at one game apiece. Oh, that's nice. Service over. 15, 20. First game point well saved. It's one game all. 21-15, the second game. Second game done by... Kondo so Kondo symmetry Kondo in the score lines. 21-15, one game all. Those, the first two games, one and lost to 15 points. 56 minutes for the first two games, and we will be treated to a third and deciding game. <laughs> Og, og jeg tror, at det her første rand, så tror jeg, at vi kan være enige om, at efter det her, det var, hvad vi har forventet. Hvis vi nu tager den præmis, at det begynder at blive 13. Men der er ingen indikationer for ham, at han ønsker at spille længere dueller end dig. Det er der altså. Vi husker lige, at vi forventer, at han kommer ud nu fra den tid, som ligesom han gjorde efter 11. Det vil sige, at han lægger lidt mere pres på sin slag. Han vil ikke give dig forbanen væk. Ikke også? Skal vi give Ja, vi give men husk nu, tålmodighed, hvis der ikke er noget, så stå nu på også, at dine stopbolde og dine drej og overspillinger gør ondt på det ham. Ikke også? Han er tung på forbanen. Han er tung på forbanen. Ja, ikke? Og husk, han tager masser. Okay. 7, 6. Court one, twenty seconds. Court one, twenty seconds. On court. So third and deciding game, game in this first round match here at the Denmark Open. Love all. The reigning world champion, Kumarud Widdesan, against Rasmus Gienka. Well, very interesting that Kenneth Jonasson was uh, talking, amongst other things, about uh, the net. Can't give your opponent control of the front court area. Oof, well, what do you do against that, though? Lovely net court. 
Love. from Rudy San. And it was played with disguise too. He's, he seemed to sort of let the racket head drop and then just seemed to caress the shuttle over. Absolutely. Thank you. action <laughs> from Kenka. Love. But I think we can see both players have, have a similar idea around the net, judging by these first couple of points. Look where his feet are. He's nowhere near the back of the court. No. He's woefully short from the day. seen many of those kind of snatchy attacking shots from uh, attacking errors from Vitas Iron so far in in this game in this match yeah it was the Peter Gader shot service over but Rita Sam was not fooled by it at one. all. Yeah. dive was absolutely Four, tremendous one. full length dive from Gernka he shakes his head oh that's great entertainment but in the end to no avail As you mentioned in the second game, I feel like this is a, a different aura coming from, from Bittasarn. Yeah. With his playing his attacking shots, having that little run out after he's played them. He looks far more confident. Oh, yeah, that's nice too. Great decision. Yeah. So many players, after hitting that big attacking shot, will want to follow up with more power. And for him to just have the realization that that's going to be difficult and to just check the shot, play yeah. the block. Yeah, I agree. Rasmus, stay on court. Oh, yes. Most peculiar looking shot from Gemka. Played that with a really bent arm. Seems to have this sort of head shake as well when he plays a, a power shot. Yeah, it's kind of a full body movement. Thank you. Wonderful. That was a, a big slice played with a full smash motion. Yeah. 
Well, if he wants to play golf in his later years, he'll be told off for moving his head. Like Absolutely. That. I'm right into my golf these days. I'm Actually, I'm glad you brought it up. What, what's your handicap now? I don't have an official handicap yet. I'm Unofficial. just starting my, my golfing journey. My dad gives me a stroke of hole. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Five. control of the net. That's what Kenny Donison was talking about. Get there first, take the shuttle early. Yeah, don't let it tumble. He took that at its earliest opportunity. the short lift with the hold and flick down the forehand side of Weaver Sand. That one, that's the one that did the damage. the hour mark in this match. An hour and five minutes, and it's only 5-4. Or 4-5, technically, I should say. In the deciding game. Oh, that's nice. Three. Oh, perfect net shot. Yeah. Yeah. And he knew he had to go for it to play the perfect net shot because he knew the strings of his racket were broken. And to do it with a, with a broken string is incredible. Get ready. I think Gemko was going for the power shot too early within the rally there. Possibly, yeah. I don't think that he'd quite opened up that space. I think Vitsarn was too on balance. We were talking about that earlier, about how you need to outmaneuver your opponent first before you start going for the big winners. Definitely. Power can be as a, used as a tool to kind of force your opponent back a little. But in that case, I think Gemka was really going for a bit of a, a winning shot. shot.
done well, considering he was 1-5 down. Inca, now just one point in it. Yeah. So whenever we see Vitsan step up that Eight. tempo, step up the Six. pace, he puts himself in really good positions. Uh, I like that follow-up. Not the final shot. This one. That's what I like. It's almost so that he, he knows he can get that one. Exactly. Get ready. Wonderful block Seven, across court eight. from Gemka. Good manoeuvring. But did, did you notice that Gemka, when he played that cross court block, never had to move from his base position at all? Yeah, just kind of straight to his racket. And that, of course, the issue for Vidasan. What a move your opponent. If you want to change this, do it immediately. Do it immediately if you want to change the shot. Yeah, I, I like that umpiring again. Too many players are waiting till almost ready to serve before asking to change the shuttle, which means there's longer delay. If you want the shuttle changed as soon as the rally is dead, ask to change it. Yeah. Deflected by the net courts from the world champion. There's one time you don't want a net cord, and that's on a lift normally. Yeah. Pop the shuttle up into the hitting zone, the deflection from the net cord. Yeah, somebody's using a flashlight. Nine. Well, that's Correction. very distracting for the players. Well, especially for Widersan. Because he's looking up into that light. Last week at the Arctic Open, I had to ask, um, there was something glinting in my eye when I was playing Pornpawee, and it was uh, a really shiny pink wig that had been placed in the front row. I've never had to ask for that anything to be removed before, but it was almost <laughs> as annoying as a flashlight. 11, eight, interval. Well, Widdesan with a three-point advantage as the players change ends here in this third and deciding game. Come in. Come in. OK. Yeah. No, det er det sidste, du har, ikke? Ja. Nu er det sidste, du har. Positiv. Ja, ja, ja. Blive de her dueller, ikke også? Det er super vigtigt herindefra, at du tør at skære dem ned foran ham. Ja. 
super, super vigtig at køre. Den sidste stopbold, den er perfekt. Ja, den, den, kan, den kommer over, over på Court den her one, side. Seconds. Ja, spil. Ja. Court 1, 20 seconds. Bliv i alle døde, Anders. Husk på, det her, du gerne vil måle dig på. Coaches, return to your chair. Er vi enige om? Ja. ja. Så lige smil på, ikke også? Kom så. Players on court. Rasmus, on court. Well, Kenneth Jonasson urging Gemke to stay cool, stay in the rallies. Well, I think one thing we can be certain of, Rasmus Gemke will never give up. He's a great fighter on court. But I don't know if you noticed, Kirsty, in that uh, first half of this deciding game, how many times did this man, Widdesson, play Gemke to the back of the court? Oh, not one that I noticed, actually. Exactly. I'm sure he must have done at some point, but mm. basically, I can't remember. He kept everything going in a downward direction. Nine, eleven. Maybe he listened to our commentary in game two. <laughs> I can assure everybody that we're too far away from players <laughs> to hear what we're saying. At least we're on the same lines, on the exactly. same track as him, him and his coach. Absolutely. I think that's a smart decision for that uh, that side of the court. Yeah. Keeping things going down, you've got much more control over the over them. So has Genko got to do that in reverse? Has he got to try and keep everything going down? I think so. I think it's a good bet. I think there was more lifts to the back of the court in that one rally from Gemke than Widdesson hit in the whole first half of this deciding game. That's, uh, I think you may be right, actually, now that, I'm, now that I'm thinking about it. Yeah, and the two, well, we've had two lift errors Yeah. so far. So back level, one game all, 11 all. An hour and 16 minutes into the match, and these two cannot be separated at the moment. Well, Widersan is challenging that. He has no hope, in my opinion. No. I saw that as clearly long. I think this is a tactical challenge. Potentially. I think, I think I've said before that I think the back line is almost impossible for a player on the far side of the court to correctly judge. Challenge unsuccessful. One challenge And I think remaining. he made that tactical challenge because he's lost four straight points. 12. 11. All four points since the change of ends. Play. Yeah. Short lift once again from Genka. Couldn't get the shuttle away to the back of the court from his deep backhand corner. Here. In fact, I think it may have been going wide as well. Mm. That's one thing I've noticed Vitsarn do quite successfully is when he's in his backhand, 
rear corner. He goes really firm, but to the net, keeps it low, but really firm. So if it, if it was left to land, it would be almost landing in kind of the rear part of the box. It's got yeah. so much kind of pace to it. 13, yeah. And it just 12. doesn't allow Gempke to, to encroach on the net. the front court. 14, 12. I think he knew uh, Gemke wasn't going to try uh, going to try to attempt to play that to the back Rasmus, of the court, Rasmus going by the last court. attempt. I have a feeling that Gemke needs to do something a little different on the return of serve. These low serves, yeah, that's better, away from the net. Create some space there. Yeah. Service over. 13, 14. That's a nice touch from Genka. Crucial, absolutely <laughs> crucial in singles. Considering he's run a full diagonal, he plays that forehand net shot with such conviction, such confidence. There's yeah. no tentativeness about it. It's direct and it's quick and it's dropping. Return to shot after the rally. Good play from Gemka. 14, and that's nice that Widdesan's coach is just giving a little smile. Appreciating the good play of Gemka. Yeah, he stayed so calm in all of those body attacks and those body pushes. He was able to just pop up and over enough. Defensive shot out of his armpit. <laughs> nice block. Oh, my goodness, how did he get that? What a good rally. What an important rally. Brilliant! Super final shot from the world 16, champion. 14. Down, but not yet out. You can see as he comes out of that shot, he is planning to, to chase that. He's planning for the next one. He doesn't stop. Yeah, it was a full slice across court. Glancing blow across the shuttle. <laughs> Thank you. On court. Well, there was a defensive shot early on in that rally from Gemka. The shuttle seemed to have gone past him and somehow he sort of played it out from underneath his armpit. Quite extraordinary. 
16, 14. Good shot. It's going wide. 17, 14. I think you're right. Not a single upward shot from the rear of the court. From the sound. Exactly. Everything being hit in a downward direction. Three point cushion. Three. Eighteen, fourteen. Yeah, saying to himself, calm down, calm down. It was a golden opportunity for Gemka. Finally, Willisan had had the player clear. And it wasn't that deep in court. Look where his feet are. Gemka. Where's it? That would have landed inside the double service line. Wanted too much from it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Seven Flat, four. fast exchanges. 16, 18. Well, what a match this has been. And it's far from over yet. Wild. What on earth was he thinking? There's never a good time 19, for 16. a shot like that to happen, but especially not when yeah. we're so close to the end of this ma match. Rasmus Uncle. Yeah, good umpiring again. Like that. Two points away from the second round for Kunla Wood Twitter's aunt. Sad is tired. If Gemka can hold his nerve. Well, who knows? Winnesan did not move for that smash at all. And after the rally, he was bent double, gasping for air. Take a look at this. We don't see that very often. Well, it's amazing with top athletes how quickly you can lose your top fitness. You know, he's taken some time off Thank you. after winning the World Championship. So only a two-point deficit now 17, for a game cup, but his opponent just two points away from booking his place in the second round. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. Well taken. He knows that Sarn's going to try and hold that net. And just read that so nicely. Pounced. One point in it. I knew we were in for a good one, but this is a very good one. It certainly is. We're just one minute away or seconds away from an hour and 30 minutes this has been in progress. <laughs> 19 all. What a match. Remember, Widersan has never won a match here at the Denmark Open in the past. He looked at 18-14 and 19-16 as if he was going to rewrite his own little history book of this tournament. Who's got the nerve? Who's got the character to deliver now when it matters? Flick serve. Oh my goodness me, what was that? Gemper on the verge of victory. Six of the last seven points for the Dane. Match point opportunity for Rasmus Gemka to beat the reigning world champion. Oh. On a run of five straight points, Rasmus Gemka comes from behind to beat the reigning world champion, Kunlawud Twinasan. 14, 18 and 16, 19 down. And he wins the deciding game, 21, 19. An hour and 31 minutes for this epic battle. And Erasmus Gemka delights the home fans who are on their feet, giving him a standing ovation. Well done. Match won by Lesmus Kempke, 21-15. Umpire confirming that scoreline. Well, he's a walking advertisement, is Gemke. Uh, for the phrase, never give up. What a superb comeback in that deciding game. I think we can safely say he's happy with that. And for the reigning world champion, Kuna Wood-Widdersan, three appearances at the Denmark Open, three first-round losses. Uh, Gemka winning through against Widdersan, 21-15, 15-21, 21-19 in the deciding game in a match lasting an hour and 31 minutes. Well, a second round action tomorrow. We've got two court coverage. All starts, same time as today. That's 9 a.m. local time. That's 0700 GMT from all of us here. And especially from Kirsty Gilmore and myself, Jill Clark. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now. <laughs>